want to try to get through uh, this last bit on in chapter 24. There's still a little bit more to go in chapter 24 after this, but this is the last bit on uh, radiation and re-radiation. So re-radiation we t introduced last time. Saying that we know that uh, we have accelerated charges that are going to produce radiation. Those radiative electric fields will affect charges in other matter, causing them to accelerate, and they in turn will uh, radiate themselves. Okay, so if we have, for example, um, a pulse coming in, where E is pointing that way, and well, actually, let me draw E in the other color here, just to stick with something close to the book here. E pointing in that direction. And we'll say B is pointing outward. And we have, from the right-hand rule here, we know this pulse is traveling in that direction, positive X direction. And so it's incident on some matter. And so matter consists of uh, atoms, okay? And so atoms are, have positively charged uh, nuclei and electrons, electron clouds that surround the uh, nucleus. So typically we're talking about electrons that are going to be the re-radiators, but not always. But let's say we just have an electron here. And so we have this electric field coming in, this radiative initial electric field coming in, call it E sub I, just to distinguish it from the re-radiation. And that charge is going to accelerate. We know that the force is Q times E. So this is a negative charge. It's going to accelerate downward. And if we have an accelerated charge, it's going to emit radiation itself, OK? So this charge emits radiation in all directions, except along the direction of acceleration. So just knowing that, we can start to think about why is anything visible, right? Why, why can we see objects that aren't directly emitting light themselves? And the answer is, Okay, reflection. Okay, but what is what is at the heart of reflection? What is reflection? It is nothing more than re-radiation. Okay, this electron. So here, you know, here's the the light source. Here's here's a light bulb or something emitting light, and that light comes in, causes charges in some object to accelerate. Those Accelerated charges are going to emit radiation in all directions, including back toward the original source or down this way or up that way, right? So if we're standing here, we would see re-radiation. Let's see. Remember, the direction is uh, given by negative Q times A perpendicular. Okay. So we have an acceleration that way. Let's say our R vector is maybe back towards the, us, towards the original source. And uh, A perpendicular is downward. And so we have negative times a negative times A perpendicular. And so eventually we'll see some re-radiation. Call it, just label it re-radiation just to distinguish it here propagating in that direction back towards us, okay, and in all, lots of other directions as well. But the light that we see reflected off of surfaces is nothing more than re-radiation from accelerated charges, the, the electrons in, in the matter, okay? Uh, so, and it's more complicated than that because we have lots and lots of electrons that are re-radiating in all directions, and then you have to add up all the electric fields, and so there's constructive and, and destructive superposition effects that lead to uh, you know, a particular uh, angle for reflection of a direct light source. But you know, in general, it's re-radiation. Okay? Uh, 
So we can talk about reflection. We can talk about, we, we mentioned this at the end of class last time, we can start to think about why things are opaque. Okay, so we had a light source and we hold some object up to the light source and you can't see through this object. Okay, but we said that the superposition principle says that if I have sources of electric field due to two different charges, and they don't have to be accelerating, just any electric fields, the superposition principle says that if I'm looking at some observation location, I have to add up the electric fields due to all the charges in the universe, okay? And here's charge one, and so charge one, I would ha have an electric field pointing in that direction, call it E1, and charge two would make an electric field at this location, also pointing in the same direction, maybe a larger field because it's closer, and that's E2, and then, then that electric field would be just the vector sum of those. And the key idea is that the presence of the second charge doesn't somehow change the electric field due to charge number one. It's still in some sense there. It's just that I've got to add it to the electric field due to charge number two. So when, we do, when you're doing superposition, you can essentially ignore each charge and find the electric field due to just that single charge and then add them all up later. Well, you're doing the same thing with radiation. Okay, you have this original electric field pointing upward, right? And now let's look, instead of back towards us, let's look at it some location downstream. So here's R, okay? And we have the original, sometime later, the original radiative electric field, again calling that E sub I, hasn't changed. Let's try this again. There we go. There's a light bulb lighting up. And you know, if I have some opaque object in front of it, you can't see the, the light. But in some sense, it's still reaching you. The, the electric field, the radiative electric field from the light bulb is still reaching you. But what else is reaching you? Not Well, the light, I wouldn't say reflected, but re-radiate. The light re-radiated from the cardboard, right? And it works out that downstream, we have the original, again, the original uh, light, the original electric field due to the source back here. We have A, accelerated charges downward, these negative charges downward. The direction, again, is given by negative Q times A perpendicular. A perpendicular is downward. We have a negative times a negative giving us a re-radiation, a re-radiative electric field pointing downward. So if I have lots and lots of electrons, what will eventually happen? When I add all the radiation and re-radiation up, it's all going to, what's happening with the cardboard? It's all, it's all going down. It's canceling out, right? So I have just lots and lots of electrons, each contributing some re-radiation in the opposite direction of my original radiative electric field and we're getting cancellation. And so the E net is smaller. And again, if I keep doing that, if I have another electron here that accelerates downward, I'm going to get some re-radiation again pointing downward, making E net smaller and smaller until eventually it would all cancel out. So if I have enough electrons, the contribution from all the re-radiation is canceling out the, con the electric field from the original source, okay? So it's, we can understand reflection, at least the basic idea, we can understand reflection, we can understand why things are opaque, just in terms of accelerated charges and radiation due to accelerated charges and the superposition principle, which we've been dealing with the entire semester, right? 